in the time that's remaining, we'll just uh, go over the slides. There is a few other things in the slides. Um, So again, that's just the diffusivity equation in three dimensions. Uh, you know, the, the, the generic form written here on the bottom, this equation is valid. So, so this is valid in Cartesian coordinates, right? But this equation down here is val valid in any coordinate system because, you know, your, your divergence operator is going to be defined depending upon the coordinate system or the basis you choose. And that could be polar coordinates or, you know, any other set of coordinates you choose. So this equation this is a truly generic one that's applicable in any coordinate system. Um, I think we really talked about what uh, M tilde is, right? It, and it's basically our well. It's our injector producer and, and the models that we're going to be solving. talked about Darcy's law. So, you know, this Darcy's law was, you guys probably know this, right? It was conducted in a set of experiments. Uh, Henry Darcy conducted a set of experiments in, in like 1858. And so here's the front cover of the paper that he published on it. And so these were empirical relationships that he derived. Uh, you know, this one in one dimension, uh, this one is in three dimensions. Uh, a lot of times we use of course, these units of Darcy, right? Um, we can actually, you know, s since Darcy discovered this relationship empirically, uh, other people have came along and actually shown that you can, you know, what's the, what's sort of the most generic momentum transport equation for fluids that you can think of? What, what, what equation governs the motion of fluids? Is it Navier-Stokes equation? Right? Navier-Stokes equation. So you can actually start with the Navier-Stokes equations and through a series of assumptions, uh, Newtonian flow, slow creeping flow with low Reynolds number, and then sort of a, a, a volume averaging, you, you can actually derive Darcy's flow from the Navier-Stokes equations. So it is consistent with the Navier-Stokes equations. That's good. We like when our mathematical models are you know, consistent with more complex mathematical models and experiments. So in all that derivation we did, we sh just used that the, the permeability was a scalar value k, okay? Uh, in general, uh, it's, a, it's a matrix or a tensor, right? So it has nine components, a second order tensor. It has nine components. A um, couple of points about what homogeneous means. So if a material is homogeneous if it, the permeability is the same everywhere, meaning you know, if, if I'm standing here and I measure one permeability in the reservoir and then I walk to the back of the reservoir, the back of the classroom, and I measure the permeability, if I get the exact same permeability everywhere I measure in the room, right, that would be homogeneous. Okay? But that doesn't necessarily mean it's isotropic. So isotropic would refer to if the permeability I measure in each direction is the same. So if I measure the permeability a fluid flowing in this direction in the room, okay, if that's the same as that direction and the same as that direction and the same as that direction and the same as that direction, then that's isotropic, okay? So you can have a homogeneous anisotropic permeability, which would mean that, you know, that the permeability tensor is the same if I measure it here and I measure it in the back of the room, but the direction, the, the, the resistance to flow in that direction could be different than the resistance to flow in that direction. And in general, it's, it's a full tensor like you see here. However, if you, if you choose your coordinate system perfectly, uh, you can diagonalize it such that it'll only have components along the diagonal like this, okay? So in this class, we'll always make the assumption that we choose our coordinate system perfectly such that, uh, you know, you'll never have these off-diagonal components. It'll always be, uh, at, at worst case, you'll have three independent components along the diagonal, but in a lot of cases, for simplicity, and that's what we did in all those derivations, is we're just going to assume that it's homogeneous isotropic, right? So if you remember, if it's, if it's not homogeneous, if it's a function of x, 
in the derivation that I did, and I'll show you in just a second and point out where, but at one point I pulled the k outside the derivative sign. I can't do that if it's not homogeneous. I'd actually have to take the gradient of k and, and distribute it in the chain rule. I'll, I'll point out where that occurs. Okay, so um, have the continuity equation, we have Darcy's law, we substitute that in and we get this form, okay? And then right here is where we're pulling it out. So we're assuming that this is homogeneous, meaning it's not a function of space, so that we can put it out here, and that's what we have right here. If it were a function of space, we couldn't do that, right? We'd have to have, we'd have to take the, we'd have to use the chain rule, right? So then it would be partial k partial x, partial p partial x, plus k partial p squared partial x, right? So because we have homogeneous means it's not a function of space. Isotropic means it's a scalar, it's not a tensor. It's the same in every direction. All right, so we talked about the formation volume factor. Uh, I think these are just repeating what was on the slides. This arises due to the nature that we want to solve these equations for reservoir conditions, but we typically, our material properties are measured in the laboratory under standard conditions. Okay. And so this is sort of those final manipulations we did. Um, we, we substituted in the formation volume factor uh, so that we got these equations. And then we just used a series of product rules and chain rules to manipulate the equations further such that we eventually got this. And then we said that this, for small compressibility, goes to zero. And I'm going to stop there because that's where Dr. Bauhoff's class stopped. And I want to stay on the same schedule, particularly because he's going to have to teach.